So when the Raspberry Pi 5 came out, I asked myself the question, I'm sure you did as well, will there be an update to the Raspberry Pi 400? In other words, a Raspberry Pi 500. And now we know the answer to that. Yes, there is. The Raspberry Pi 500 is here. In this video, I want to uh, unbox it. I want to give you a review and I open it up, see what's on the inside. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 500 puts the power of the Raspberry Pi 5 into a compact keyboard design. So the Pi 500 is a Raspberry Pi 5 in the important form factor that really drove the home computer revolution in the 1980s and the 1990s. We're talking things like the Commodore 64, the VIC-20, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum in the UK, the BBC Micro, really kind of the computer and the keyboard all in one, and then you would connect it up. In those days, connect it up to the television, connect it up to a monitor, uh, and you've got that same design now, everything in a very uh, friendly keyboard. And of course, when you see the Pi 4 and the Pi 5, they're absolutely brilliant, and I love them, and you've got, I've got lots of videos about them here on this channel, but it is just a bare surface circuit board and if you're just getting into you know software development or you want to give this as a gift to somebody to kind of get into uh, computers if you want to start with just simple maker projects seeing just a raw circuit board can be a bit intimidating you say well what do I do with this it's just a bit of a circuit board but when you've got it in that keyboard then you are it's instantly much more friendly, instantly much more accessible, instantly anybody can say, okay, keyboard, right, okay, what do we do now? Plug it in the monitor there, oh, great, HDMI, great, it's all working. So the form factor is an important aspect when people approach the Raspberry Pi lineup, when people approach learning new skills. And as you know, the Pi 500 is the successor to the Pi 400, so it does have that same form factor as we've previously seen, but you've now got the Pi 5 on the inside. So let's just look at the specs. You've got that keyboard, of course, as I mentioned. You've got a quad-core ARM Cortex-A76 running at 2.4 gigahertz. These are basically the same specs as a Raspberry Pi 5. You've got the Video Core 7 GPU. You've got two micro HDMI, notice micro HDMI uh, ports that can power 4K displays. You've got a H.265 hardware decoder, eight gigabytes of RAM. Then you've got a uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. There's also a micro SD card slot which supports high speed micro SD cards and from that you'll run your operating system traditionally Raspberry Pi OS. You've got two USB 3 ports that support simultaneously 5 gigabits operation. That's due to the new I.O. chips that are in the Pi 5. You've also got another port. It's a USB 2 port, gigabit Ethernet. You've got power coming in via USB-C. You've got the standard 40-pin uh, header, but this is horizontal now at the back of the keyboard. And there are plenty of different uh, adapters and ribbon cables and so on that can just help you break that out to give you uh, access to different circuitry and different projects that you want to do. There's a dedicated power button on the keyboard now, soft soft power button that is, and there's also a programmable LED. Now let's look around the design here. Here we can see all the different ports. So, you know, that are all neatly lined up here at the back. At the moment, it's only available in white. The Pi 400 was a white and red setup, just gonna be white this time round. Uh, and there are several different keyboard variants for the international markets. Of course, with the Pi 500, you will be running Raspberry Pi OS. Of course, you can run any operating system you can run on a Raspberry Pi 5. And you can also now blink the LED using the pin control program. Now, initially, I wanted to overclock my Pi 500, so I went straight to 3 gigahertz, up from 2.4 gigahertz on my first attempt, and it was completely stable. And that's a lot to do here with the uh, big heatsink. Uh, that's inside of it. So depending on your use case, this will result in a speed increase of between 15 and 20%. Now, initially, of course, I took apart my Pi 500 to see what's in the inside. As I mentioned, there is that big heat sink. And as you can see here, there are silk screen markings and the tracks are laid down for an M2 slot that would allow you to connect in an SSD drive. Now, that's obviously not there. That's not been included and it's not something that has been talked about, not something that has been promised. However, that would really be quite an exciting upgrade. 
Now the Raspberry Pi 500, just the unit on its own with a 32 gigabyte SD card with Raspberry Pi OS installed in it, costs $90. You can get a full kit, which includes the SD card, the USB-C power supply, a mouse, a two meter micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable that plugs very nicely into the Raspberry Pi monitor and the beginner's guide for $120. Okay, so there you have it, the Raspberry Pi 500. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you prefer the 400, the 500 series over the normal Raspberry Pi 4, the Raspberry Pi 5? Do you do you buy it as a companion? Is it just not something you reserve at all? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.